Okay, this sermon is entitled, The Galatian Error. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 132 reads, Lord, remember David and all his afflictions, how he swear unto the Lord and vowed unto the mighty God of Jacob, Surely I will not come into the tabernacle of my house, nor go up into my bed. Now, what exactly is the Galatian error? Well, the Galatian error was basically a reversion back to law practice with actual believers. And we see this in Galatians chapter 3. Paul was dealing with Gentile believers who were accustomed to law adherence and obedience. For instance, Sabbath day synagogue visitations, circumcision, and attending feasts and ceremonies these people were law-minded, and they were supposed to be focused on grace. It reads in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 1, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you, this only would I learn of you, received ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Verse 4, Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Verse 6, Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Verse 7, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. So Paul was basically making a distinction between faith and law. The first thing we see is that a believer in Christ receives the Holy Spirit by faith, not by the works of the law. And we also see that the works of the flesh or law, when it comes to salvation, is completely in vain. Now you have heretics out there that claim that we're saved by faith, but then we're kept saved by the law. And this is absolute blasphemy because, according to the Bible, there's no such thing as being kept saved when it comes to what man does. The Bible makes it clear that God keeps us saved, and we are kept by the power of God. And once a person is saved, they're always saved, and nobody can pluck us out of God's hand. But yet, there's another form of the Galatian error amongst believers, and that is that we're saved by faith in Christ, but we have fellowship and we perform the Christian walk and even undergo discipleship by the works of the law. And the solution to this problem is simply this. We're saved by faith. We have fellowship by faith. The Christian walk is by faith. And so is discipleship. But now there are extremists with this Galatian error who will go as far as to say that you better not have any type of works. And when it comes to salvation, you better not have works. Romans 4, 5 clearly says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. And what Paul is saying in Galatians chapter 3 is that salvation is all by faith. And he even references back to Abraham who believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. But see, these extremists out there, they'll even go as far as to say that we don't need to use 1 John 1, 9. We don't need to confess our sins, and there's no rewards in heaven. And this is a load of garbage. And what these people are essentially promoting is idleness, oceosity, complete laziness, and a bunch of stupidity. Because according to the scripture, especially in the New Testament, there are rewards in heaven. And 1 John 1, 9 is still in the Bible, irrespective of what these idiots are teaching. So what is the solution to this problem when it comes to service in the post-salvific life? Well, it's simple. According to the Bible, God wants us to serve him because we want to, not out of some form of lawful obligation. Turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. It reads in verse 6, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. So instead of griping and whining, God wants us to serve him willingly. And this is not the same as reverting back to the law, because the law just puts people back into bondage, and it demands of people things they don't want to do. 
So the bottom line is this. We need to watch out for and mark and avoid the false prophets out there who are saying that we're saved by faith and then we keep our salvation by law adherence. And also we need to avoid the people who want to make the Christian life all about keeping the law as well. And then, of course, we have these extremists out there, these idiots, who claim that we shouldn't even preach the gospel at all. Just preach the gospel to yourself, I heard one of them say. It's stupid. It's foolish. And the only reason people are saying this junk is because they don't want to give the gospel to anyone else. They're a bunch of lazy, sorry cowards who mock the concept of earning rewards because they themselves don't want to earn anything. So that's all I have. Salvation is completely by grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. The Christian life should also be by grace through faith, and we should serve God because we want to, not out of some dreadful obligation. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.